Six months ago, we set out to transform a Mercedes Sprinter into our very own Golf Tour Bus, which you will have seen in some of the recent videos. And we thought you might like to see how we transform this into this. Oh, and a word of warning, there is no golf featured in this video. Penny's just being asked to be quiet. It's another week and uh, we start another load of jobs. Something's never changed. Penny is still barking, making sure we're all safe. We've got loads going on. As you can see, the panels have been going up. We've got some spotlights that have been going up. It's weird doing this because there never seems to be a week where you just do one job. They all seem to overlap. So we've got loads going on. Hannah is currently, what are you doing? Firing up our last spotlight. Wow. So, it works. yeah, so we've got some interesting, like the way we've connected the wiring, which is really simple. We've got, we'll tell you the way in which we've uh, sort of going to power the whole van in terms of uh, our electricity, which again is mega, mega simple. And I've gone from being uh, scared stiff of these electrics, or we've been scared stiff, probably put the whole thing on hold for quite some time because of it. And honestly, we found a real simple and easy way, idiot proof way of doing it. So we'll talk you through that as well. We've got to switch some power on first of all and see if they work, or well, they work. So we've just finished wiring up all our lighting because we want to get our uh, ceiling finished. But what we've decided to do is insulate the ceiling with the leftover uh, sheep's wool that we've got. So we're just going to sort of do that as we go, put each panel up and then fill it with the sheep's wool. <laughs> Just cutting our pieces where it's going to go around the fan, but do you not think we should try and put this up and see what it's like before we cut it? No. Okay. Measure. What is it? Cut twice, measure once. Great. So that's our new motto. Lovely stuff. <laughs> we'll be doing that again in five minutes. Right, off again. Moment of truth. Perfect. Hey. Perfect. I wouldn't go that far, but I think it'll work, yeah. This should be okay. Right. Just when I think I've painted my last piece of wood, we find another pack. This job is just never ending. So this video is, uh, we're chopping and changing about what we're doing. Like I said, there's the walls, there's the ceilings, and there's the electricity. And the main bit of the electricity was the kind of unit that we're going to use or how we're going to supply our van with electricity, with power. And we went for this kind of portable lithium option. And simply because, I think we said in one of the earlier videos, our requirements are kind of, we're certainly not off grid. We don't want to huge demands in terms of electricity requirements. So we looked at what is, I suppose, a real simple option. That's the first thing. And it's, as far as I can see so far, this is perfect. It's this uh, Gold Zero uh, Lithium 1500X. Um, so all we're powering is the kind of like lights, uh, fridge. What else have we got, Han? Remind me. Water heater. Water heater. Um, some under lighting for the cookers and things like that. All 12 volts in the majority. It has got the option to power some 240 volt stuff as well, if required. But in all honesty, it's small, it's compact. It's gonna fit in a great little position that we've got it there. And I suppose it's an easy option in terms of uh, the complications of power batteries and all the different things that you need. This, for our requirements, like I said, is perfect. So that's what we're going to use. I'll show you quickly um, how we've done our sort of first fix in terms of uh, the lights and another few cables that we've laid in so far. 
So the first thing we did was the same as everybody else, we laid in our sort of first fix of cabling and uh, that was what you've seen earlier on, which I don't think we actually featured in the video. But So spotlights, one simple strand of wire that made its way this whole loop round back to the beginning, fed back down through the walls and back to the position which is where our electricity unit is going to sit, which is housed in this uh, cupboard here. Then we fed another one in for the fan. We fed another one in for some lighting at the back end. That's the stuff that's all gone behind or built into the walls and into the sort of ceiling. And that was our first fix done. We haven't got any major complications in terms of what requirements. Um, and then what we're going to do a bit later on is our sort of kitchen units are going to go around here. So all the other electricity power points and uh, some under cupboard lighting, uh, the water heater, all the other bits will be on this wall. And we've got a bit of a, we're going to feed that across the floor behind a seating area that we've got. So we don't need to go over the top. That can all be hidden and tucked away behind the kind of panelling that we're going to put in later on for where the seating area is going to be. So that'll all be hidden and then pop up around here. And all we've done, I'll show you if you just come back down here, Adam, we fed into, and we'll show you a bit more of this a bit later on, but we fed into this uh, simple fuse box. There's only two cables wired up at the moment. Uh, the fuse box goes into these kind of uh, adapters. I think they're called Anderson cables. The Anderson cable goes into this point here and then you select 12 volts and hopefully we've got some spotlights and mm -hmm. uh, well, it's just the spotlights and the fan that are wired up at the moment uh, and it gives you all kinds of readings as to how much power you've got left, how much power you're using, all those kind of things as well. But I can't believe how sort of uh, clever this unit is, how simplistic it is and for all the kind of things I was frightened to death of in terms of the electrics it's a real, real simple unit and the wiring we've done so far is also really simple and I'll give you our last little bit of, uh, it's not advice because we're in no position to advise anyone, but the bit we bought earlier this morning was, I've been using these kind of like little, I'm not even sure what they're called, these spade connectors, plug in together, so one wire in there, one wire in the other bit, plug them together and they're okay but they're a bit fiddly. So I went into um, electrical supply this morning and we got these things and again I don't know what the technical name is for them. The brand we bought is Wago, and that's the code. Try and search them, but find these things because they're incredible. And basically, that's a little unit that houses three cables. You flip these back, and you feed your cable, or however many cables, I think they do a block of five, block of three. You feed your cables into there. When you've got your cable fed in, you close it and clamp it down. That's made a connection. So in, in terms of the lights, Oh, oh yeah, here's one we prepared earlier. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have done this well, it's all powered on at the moment. So all you do in terms of the lights, you've got your two live feeds, which are our blue cables in this case. Um, they're two kind of neutral feeds, which are brown in our case. And then you feed your light. Is that on camera? Can you mm -hmm. see that? Yep. The light, our live goes to live and so on and so forth. And that's how you connect the three and keep that kind of loop or circuit, whatever it is the technical term going. Um, and we did that on every one, obviously, of the spotlights until we got to the end one. And that follows back like a through back and then connects to that sort of fuse board. I hope that's it. Like I said, if there's other bits as we go along, I'll, uh, I will fill you in. But I think it's as simple as that. Have I missed anything, Han? I don't think so. I'm not trying to, well, obviously not trying to tell anyone how to do anything. It's just like we found a, what is a really, really easy and simplistic way of doing it. And with the power that we've got, and I'll let you know in sort of when we've got everything running, how much electricity it's drawing from it. For, for us, I think it'll be a real good unit. And I'm really made up that we've got six lights working no. in a fan so far. So, yeah, that's it. So I think the painting is finally done. Well, the uh, the primer is finally done on all the ward, unless we find another pack that isn't painted yet. But I didn't actually think we were going to be able to paint anything today because the forecast is uh, rain all week. But the sun is out, it's glorious, and uh, we've actually managed to get it all done. So I'm just having to sit down because I don't know if it's normal, but I do too much painting like that, I get a bad back. Um, I don't think that should be happening at the age of 24, so let's take a little breather.
We have different uh, sort of targets and goals, me and Hannah. I want to do everything in like a day and Hannah wants to do it properly, so she's probably got it right. I like to, I'm a bit of a rush job. I just want to say that measure once, cut twice didn't happen. Measured once, cut once. It didn't fit perfect, I'll be honest. <laughs> but I managed to get away. about three weeks since those clips that you've last just seen and um, my dad's been working away again so it means we've spent no time on the van at all um, but the plan for this week was Monday to Thursday uh, get all our work done and Friday we'll spend all day on the van but as usual when we make a plan like that it's torrential raining but we've got a backup plan Zebo. We're dry. And it stopped raining. I know. <laughs> the irony. But well, uh, it's going to fall down all day, so trust me. We yeah, need it. it'll be worth it. It's better add rain now. I can report that on a recent trip to Scotland, I have slept in the van. So bought a, uh, I think it's a yoga mat, really, you know. Yeah. Bought a yoga mat, rolled out on the floor there and bought two pillars for six quid and slept on the floor while waiting for a ferry. Well, ironically, gazebo's gone up and the sun's come out, but anyway, it's, uh, I'm, I'm praying for rain, otherwise that was a waste of time. But for the time being, we've just put up a few last panels on this side, that's as low as we can go. Hannah has got sander in hand and we're gonna get a better finish on these walls. We've already tried sort of painting them with, a, uh, with the finish we tried. I think we'll probably strip it back just a little bit. Try and sand down all the joints, all where we've put nails in, tidy it up and get a neat finish is the plan, isn't it, Han? Yep. How are you getting on with that? Love it. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, so fun. We're doing a job, so uh, crack on. Let's go. I think we've got two. We found another little one as well. I'm doing all the little uh, joints, and Hannah's doing all the bits that need the muscle. <laughs> So we decided after putting the roof vent in the van that putting any more holes into it was uh, too scary, really, isn't it? Cutting a hole? Yeah. Yeah, we bottled it. Bottled it big time. It, do you know what though, it's like leaving, it's like taking your kids to creche or school for the first day. Yeah. I don't want to leave her. Overnight. Do you? Sad, no. I hope it's back in one piece and three so, windows fitted. Yeah, she's getting windows, two in the back, one in the side, so tomorrow. We'll be picking her up to see what she looks like. Well, we're just about to collect the van. It's been in for two days and uh, we just had a phone call to say it's ready. And we're just round the corner from it now, or pulling it. Oh, we can't see nothing this side. Well, there it is. But the van, Slim the window me. is on the other side, but I can see glass. Oh, oh my God. And some rear yeah. windows as well. Looks good. We've just got the van back home and what do you think? I can't believe it. It's, it's amazing. so good. It, it looks, looks amazing on the outside. 
Really There's cheap, the back. Really. On the side. It does a great job as well, to be fair. So good. Well, inside, I cannot believe how much difference it's made in terms of light. So much brighter in here. Well, it's like it's changed it from from a, a well, it's probably gone dark now. <laughs> yeah. Just put the lights on. But it has changed it from being like a van yeah. to a camper van. It seems to have the biggest impact on what we've done so far, mm -hmm. it? Yeah, it's crazy. And he has done a real good job. I think we've yeah, got to so remember it, that we really bottled it. Yeah. So we did the roof uh, fan. Mm -hmm. Did a good job of it as well. Yeah, it's done well, but I wasn't mm. comfortable in cutting three big holes in the side panels. Yeah. And I think it's worth pointing out, we could have got the windows. I think the windows to us were about 300 quid. Yeah. And we've paid this company uh, one for you windows in Fly uh, and Airex who were brilliant and it cost us £600. So we've effectively paid 300 quid to get them fitted but honestly mm -hmm. it's the best Definitely worth it. I yeah. think so anyway. Definitely. Yeah, so pleased with that. Game changer. Really is. Isn't it? Definitely. It's so good and um, we've got great vision outside but yeah. it is proper blacked out from the outside as well. Yeah, you can't see it in there. Really good. Pen, what do you think? Any words for camera? 